Today I'm going to be playing and talking about the song I'm in love with the German film star by The Passions. And uh, this one's actually been requested by a number of people so there's clearly a lot of love out there for this song. And it is a great song and it's full of great atmospheric guitar parts and you're certainly going to need your delay pedal for this one. So I'm going to begin by playing through the track. I think I'm going to play through the entire song if that's not too self-indulgent of me and then I'll break it down for you. So let's get started. <laughs> start by giving you a bit of background on the song and the band and the passions according to my not particularly extensive research were active between 1978 and 1983 I suppose you could loosely describe them as a post-punk band and uh, this song is certainly their best known song it was a, a bit of a hit for them I think in 1981 and I have to say that it's the only song of theirs that I knew before this week where I actually checked out some of their other stuff they released two albums 
And the album that I was listening to this week is the album that this song is taken from. It's called 30,000 Feet Over China and uh, really enjoy it. It's a very strong record, I think. The guitar on this one played by someone called Clive Timperley and I could find next to no information about him online. He doesn't have his own Wikipedia entry and there's just a quote on the main Passions page where it talks about his delicate echoplex guitar work. So uh, I'd be interested in learning a bit more about him if anybody knows and uh, going on the evidence of this song and he's playing on these two albums. He's got a very distinctive and interesting style. Let me take you through all of the parts that I'm hearing on this recording then. And this one's not particularly hard to play and it's not a song that's about that kind of thing. It's not about technique or chops or any of that boring stuff. It's about coming up with interesting atmospheric parts and really that's the important stuff. That's stuff that people are actually going to want to listen to. So let's get started. Clearly delay or echo is a huge part of this one so I think that might be the best place to start and you're going to need some kind of delay unit or delay pedal. It doesn't particularly matter what I don't think. Any delay pedal should do it but the key thing is you want the delay to be in time with the track and it's a eight note delay that you want with this one so you've got that that kind of sound one and two and three and four and and you can get that delay in time just by ear and just by playing around with the delay time on your pedal that's what I did or you might have a delay pedal with some kind of tap tempo function that can be useful you just tap your foot in time to the song and then the delay time will be calculated if you set it to eight notes or these days if you're recording in a computer then you can very easily sync the delay to the tempo of the track so once you've got your tone dialed in let's get into the actual guitar parts of this song and the whole song is based on a cycle of three chords and it just goes round and round for most of the song and uh, it's a little bit hard to say what is going on theoretically here or even what key we're in with this one. I'd be interested if any theory nerds out there have got any ideas about this but I don't know if music theory is particularly helpful when it comes to a song like this but the three chords we're dealing with we've got G, E, B and we've got two bars on each of those so it sets up a six bar cycle. I think that's quite interesting. Often songs are based on four or eight bar cycles so the fact that these chords are repeating every six bars just makes the track a little bit unusual. Right at the top of the song you can hear some volume swells and it's just on these same chords so I think it starts on a B chord and you're just fading in the volume and there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can do it with the volume knob on your guitar and the, the way it works is you turn the volume all the way off, you play the chord and then gradually fade in the, the volume. And the way that I'm actually doing it, the way that I did it in my demo at the start of this video was with a volume pedal so uh, it works in exactly the same way, it just saves you having to reach for the volume knob on your guitar. So uh, that sounds like this fading the volume in and out with the pedal so my heel is down you've got no volume and then so that's what you're hearing at the start of the song and uh, we're just going through the chords B G E and then back to B again I think the B and the G are played just as regular six string root bar chords the E is played as an open chord so that all sounds like this the band enters and we start going around this cycle of chords starting on the B and the first thing you hear is I think a B power chord so most of the time it's just playing those bar chord shapes but occasionally there are some variations so we've got a B, a B power chord and then often in the song the G is being played like this so rather than doing the full bar chord you're lifting up the barred finger and allowing the open B and E to ring to ring out. So you can play it like that, like a, a normal bar chord, but just lift up your first finger. Or perhaps you could just bring your thumb over the top and play that root note if you wanted to. Uh, it gives that nice atmospheric sound. I suppose what this chord is, theoretically speaking, is the addition of this E note, the open B string is already in the chord, that's the third, but we've got an E in there as well, that's the sixth 
in relation to the G root. So I suppose this is a G6 chord. And then we've got E. Then we've got these lovely delicate melodic lines coming in. So that's the first one we're hearing, playing this on the top three strings, starting with this B note and then just descending over onto the B string and then over onto the G string. And then we've got a slight variation. So going up to this high C sharp. Then we're changing positions coming up to this high E. So it's really the same idea as we just had but transposed. So. Then we've got this. So just a series of fifths really. We've got this little shape here, 14 and 16, and then moving that shape two frets down and just, just playing these short, sharp notes and that allows the delay to come through. So just playing this G sharp and sliding off and then the same thing two frets lower. And then we're back to the uh, the chords. We have an E power chord, and then our melody. So that's the, the whole introduction. Let me just put all of that together. Then we're into the first verse and for the most part the verses of this song are very simple just strumming those chords and letting them hang for two bars so we're starting with the G or the G6 four, one two three four then the E two three four and then the B and just going around that cycle occasionally there are some slight variations so rather than uh, the E played as an open chord, you might play it as a, as a power chord, that kind of thing, but nothing major for the most part. It's pretty simple. Then we've got another instrumental passage, and that's very much like the introduction with these little melodic lines, but there's some slight variations in there. So we've got... little variation just at the end you can hear. So it starts exactly the same as before. Then we come up to this high melody. And then we've got the variation. So it's based on these fifth shapes like we had uh, in the introduction as well. So here we've got 12 and 14 and then 15, 17 and 17, 19, which starting with the higher note of those shapes. And then a bend. So I'm just bending the what is that? The 21st fret. So all together is. Then we go around for another verse, I think that's played exactly the same as before. There's another little instrumental passage with some further nice feels and variations. So I'll just play that through for you, starting from the G chord, just building up the intensity a little bit. starting just with the, the, the G bar chord and playing the E like this, so with that C grip. So starting from the A string, you've got fret seven, six, four, five, and maybe four on top as well. And then we've got 
this nice triad based fill. So it's this D form triad. So I think your open D chord, I'm just moving it up here. So this is a B triad, and then a D, and an E, and then moving it all the way up here to uh, a G triad. So. To the outro of the track and the energy is building i think there are some other guitar parts creeping in here as well it's a little bit hard to hear what this guitar part is doing but what i decided to do is play a part like this so and this is all based off of triads really so a b triad G and an E and I'm including this note as well which is the fourth and the part I'm playing is so playing a melody but I keep coming back onto this B note this note on the, on the B string at the 12th fret so and then just following the chord so going to G E. I think we play that a couple of times, then we go back to that melodic stuff like we had in the intro. And then it's another nice variation. So it's that same part that we had at the start of the song but instead of sliding down you can hear that he's sliding up so and then I think it's just back to the chords to end the track and ending on B that's it for the main guitar part I think but there is a second guitar that you can hear coming in about halfway through the tune it's playing this riff which is just repeated until the end of the song so so that's going like this it's following the chords once again we're starting um, on the B chord here and it's very much like that lead guitar riff that I was playing just a moment ago it's the same idea based off of the arpeggio so B triad or arpeggio and we're going to include that E note as well so just keep coming back to that B note uh, at the seventh fret on the low E down to G and then moving it to E and moving down to E you haven't got that G sharp available to you on the A string so I have to play it here and I'm including some open strings as well so the, the fingering is slightly different here round again and as I said that riff is just repeated until the end of the song it could be the the very end of the track there's maybe another layer or two of guitars in there as well just doing some strumming but it's a little bit hard to discern exactly what's going on at the end of the track let me give you a quick rig rundown of the gear that I'm using today guitar is my jazz master amp is a Fender Princeton I've got some pedals down here as well already mentioned the volume pedal which I was using for the introduction that's an Ernie Ball volume pedal then what else have I got? I've got a compressor. So I do like the sound of compression, particularly on a clean guitar sound. And the particular compressor that I've got here is the Kali 76 from Origin Effects, which is a great compressor. It's kind of the guitar pedal version of the studio compressor, the 1176, which you see in just about every recording studio. And uh, my other favorite guitar compressor is the MXR Dynacomp, but that's something of a 
one trick pony it's a great trick but if you want a bit more control over things like uh, attack and release and ratio and all of that malarkey then uh, the the origin effects pedal is going to give that control to you then i've got some chorus as well this is a uh, boss ce2 this is the waza craft version uh, waza is a uh, japanese i think for much more expensive than the the standard model and of course there's the delay as well and as i said you can use any delay pedal you don't have to have something fancy but today i thought i would get out something fancy and that's my roland space echo this is a vintage space echo which is a wonderful thing if it's working properly it's not always working properly but today i think i've got lucky and every one of these space echoes sounds slightly different and um, my own has got a particular character to it but you can hear in the repeats that it's got a really nice degraded kind of grainy quality to it and you can hear a little bit of pitch wobble as well going on in there so it really is a great sound That's it for today's video. Hope you found it interesting. If you would like Tab, then I have meticulously nerdily written out the entire track, including all of those little bits that I might have skimmed over slightly in this video. So that's going to be up on my Patreon page, along with my own backing track. So check out those things should you be interested. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.